So without further ado, I gotta big it up for Flatbush Finest veteran, Mon Call Chip Fu. Make some noise. Legendary chip food. Yeah, it's on. Wow, this is real low. <laughs> What's up, people? How y'all doing? What's up, people? Yes. All right, all right, all right. Energy. That Energy. sound better. That sound better. I didn't come to just hear people falling asleep and Z's or nothing. So. All right. We good. We good. So let's get to it. We're going to start from the very, very beginning. Like I mentioned, I'm also a West Indian youth, uh, Brooklyn youth of West Indian descent. So let's take it back to growing up in Brooklyn, also being of West Indian descent. How did it start for you? Uh, mother and father from the West Indies. My mother's from Trinidad. Father's from Barbados. So everything that was basically being played in the house was either reggae, calypso, or ska music. So... Um, yes, and not only that, my uh, parents used to play the steel pan. They played several instruments, so when it came to uh, loving music, my brother used to bring all of the hip-hop stuff to the house. So I was hearing uh, tapes of park jams, and then, you know, I would hear tapes of park jams late at night, then early in the um, afternoon, I'm hearing soca and... Um, and reggae music, so I, you know, that helped me to develop my style. Same, <laughs> same. All right, so with that being said, a lot of people ask me, like, what was the, out of the two, what was the first thing I fell in love with? And um, so I'm gonna ask you the same, out of the two, seeing that you were in the house and you heard reggae in the house, was that your first love or was it when you stepped out the house and heard the park jams? I can't separate it, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Because if I tried to separate that, that'll be like trying to actually separate me, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, even when it came to recording the Fushnikins albums, if you heard the very first album, the, you know, some of the rack, some of the tracks had like a reggae flavor to it. So uh, even Jive itself wanted us to do more hip hop, but we had to basically be who we are as people and, you know, make sure that we balanced it out. So uh, it, that would be hard for me to pick. Okay. Because word on the street was that you were originally a reggae artist, mm -hmm. then you started rapping. Is the word on the street true or is it false? <laughs> you know, people talk, oh, what do you think that on the street? So, go on, go on. You can't listen to everything. You're All right. Streets, you know, right. You know, that's why I'm my father to the source, you know? Now, what it was is um, my brother used to bring me to, to all the sound clashes in Brooklyn. So, I think I was 11 years old when my brother was like, uh, I need for you to go over there and touch that mic. And he would bring me up to the select and be like, my little brother's nice. And they'd be like, no, he's not. He's 11. Yeah. He, need, <laughs> he needs to be home coloring. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he, they'd always throw on a rhythm, and I'd jump on there, and I'd tear it down. And then from there, that's where it grew. And then UTFO lived around the corner from us. On, I lived on 55th, 56th Street. Uh, UTFO lived on 55th Street. East Flatbush. Right. So my brother had a 16th birthday party, and I asked the group at the time, which was Untouchable Force, mm -hmm. uh, if I could sing Happy Birthday for my brother at 11. So what it was is I rhymed at 11 for uh, UTFO, and they was like, you really got to watch this kid because this kid is singing, he's chatting, he's doing all this stuff, singing Happy Birthday for you, and that's, you know, that's where it took off, so... Nah, I wasn't really a reggae artist first. I was just trying to get people's attention. You know what I mean? Yeah, because uh, when I think of uh, your, you and your music, I definitely put you in the staple of like a uh, shine head who was very versatile and also could sing, also could chat, also could rap, and all that stuff. Um, especially with like the food snickers. I also, for me, I'm I'm such a nerd with it. So like I pin like I could pick out certain things. Like and with ringing the alarm, I definitely heard a lot of. Uh, Saxon influence, uh, Papa Levi, my God, my King, cap in the book and a book in the cap. Real you think this natural clock? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Talk about it. This is the weirdest thing. Um, Tennis saw when he used to come to New York City, he used to stay 
on my block in, at the, in this basement apartment, right? So growing up, and, and, and I heard of that record, a friend of mine was like, yeah, that man, that guy is staying in my basement, uh, you know, across the street. I was like, Tennessee can't be in your basement, bro. And he was <laughs> like, yes, because he's going to perform at um, one of these clubs on Utica Avenue in Brooklyn. So I was like, okay. So what I did is I started listening to the Tennessee um, records, and then I heard Ring the Alarm, and I figured that would be one of the most uh, incredible records for us to sample, you know, especially coming out of East Flatbush, Brooklyn, and um, I figured that that would actually really represent us the most, you know what I mean? So that's how that happened. For sure. So um, I'm going to ask you to touch a little bit of it. Ring the alarm. It's all good. All right. Ring the alarm, Chip Foo, live and direct. Hi-Fi, Session. To the people on the left singing, and to the people on the right singing, to the people in the back singing, hey you the people in the front singing, hey yo everybody, everybody, don't just watch me, <laughs> it's all good, alright people. All on pull up. Yeah. Hey, yo, ring the alarm. I know the sound is dying. Whoa. Hey, hey, yo, ring the alarm. I know the sound is dying. Whoa. Hey, hey, yo, ring the alarm. I know the sound is dying. Yo. Yo, ring the alarm, I don't wanna say calm Yo, I'm about to rip this arm When the mic is gripped by chip, yo, it's like bombs If we get coming with the sweet, I'm in me neat I'm in a ram, poor skin tea Cause lyrics feel like with me tongue And rhymes me, yeah, I'm up with me tea Lyrical prophet, you can't stop this From the West Indies, you can tell about lyrical prophet From the worst folk and the broken up in these Books and scrolls, I got four Nods and gills, make me bow Into the gents in my system Converts itself, becomes wisdom Born into the dad, that's a big go Huff, see, pan, come, let's go Cap with the buck and the buck and the cap The real shit, think this not true fact This lyrical man can't hold me back For the red, the white, and also the black Island, which is my land, my place of birth. You can tell by the tongue that's one of the lyrical structure in my verse. MCs don't cross this border, cause by now I know I'm sorta. Liberally wise, but now I despise all you, this out of order. Don't try to test your enemy of this snicking, cause I'm not done with the lyrical box, the beating and the licking. Done with that, yo, done with that, done with that. Y'all make some noise, yo. That's not easy to do. Make some noise. What does the fast chat style mean to you? Uh, yo, that's 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 that whole fast chat thing came from my brother. You know what I'm saying? He's my brother's from Brixton, so he used to bring all the Saxon records Makes sense. home, and I used to just sit there and listen to them and be like, "Yo, these people from England are totally different, and the pockets that they are in, I'd rather be in those pockets instead of you know the regular MCs in New York City." You know what I mean? Same. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. So, f you. Don't take it personal comes out. What is the, what's the reaction? Um, the, the funniest thing with F you don't take it personal when it first came out, a lot of people took it as a joke because before we got signed, I was actually walking into all these uh, MC battles wearing a Chinese gi with the, you know, the, the bamboo hat and I'd walk into the center and be like, yo, who got bars? And <laughs> I'd tear everybody up and then from there, Jive came down to one of our sessions. I think it was at the building in New York City, and it was myself and Jamalski. So Jamalski and I were just trading lyrics back and forth, and then from there we got signed. Um, for me, uh, if you don't take it personal, just basically speaks about the life of, <laughs> of three West Indian guys, you get me? Yeah. In East Flatbush, Brooklyn. So every song touched on growth, basically, and growing up in East Flatbush, Brooklyn. I love that album. One of my favorite Thank joints you. on the album definitely is um, Last Move, We Ain't Got Nothing to Prove. Uh, can we talk about that real quick and talk about the relationship you had with uh, the early great Five Dog? Uh, Pac Fu and, and, and um, Five Dog are actually cousins. So uh, growing up on 56th Street, I used to see Five Dog across the street by Pac Fu's house. Pac Fu lived actually across the street from me on 56th Street. So. Um, to finally get signed to Jive and know that there was somebody there that we knew already that was in a group which was Tribe Called Quest was pretty cool. And we always spoke about doing a song together. So to finally do a song and him get on a song, we wanted it to be a big song. So uh, Ali Shaheed, Tribe Called Quest, produced it and 
That's how Lash Move was born. Nice. Y'all go check that out if y'all don't know about it. If y'all don't know about it, shame. Shame, shame, shame. But yeah, big shame. <laughs> big shame. Big shame. So um, we leave F you don't take it personal, and now we about to have a nervous, super nervous breakdown. Um, you do a tune, and it has a very familiar catchphrase uh, by a very familiar cartoon character. You do the tune, the sample's not cleared, the tune doesn't come out. Then all of a sudden, a very famous athlete does an interview saying that y'all are his favorite group. And then he jumps on the tune. Am I missing anything from that story? Uh, the, the funniest part was um, Latifah was like, uh, the, I don't watch sports. I could be very honest with you. <laughs> I don't watch no sports, so I'm not the sports guy. When I was in high school, I wanted to play soccer, and everybody laughed at me, but it's cool. Um, so <laughs> my, my, partner, Americans. my partners was like, yo, uh, there's this uh, uh, basketball uh, person that wants to get on the song. I was like, well, I don't know who he is or whatever the case may be. So fast forward, they fly us down to Orlando. Uh, we're there, and then Shaq walks in, and um, I'm standing there looking up at this guy, and I was like, yeah, he's pretty tall, you know, first and foremost. And uh, we took to each other real quick. He said he loved the music. But here's the funny part. To see him do a, a, a to break dance, like he can really break dance, and he did a windmill and a head spin, that's the craziest thing to see. So I was just like, oh, you really do love hip hop. You can windmill. Like you're seven foot and change in your windmill. I was, I was wind literally about okay. to say he's kind of wild yeah. tall for doing that, but. So then we spoke about doing a song, and uh, What's Up Doc was already finished because we couldn't put it out, so we figured it would make more sense to put him on that song, so we went uh, for him to record his verse. The funniest thing about it is they were trying to mic Shaq in this room, so they had to get two mic stands. <laughs> so if you could imagine the regular mic stand when you pull it all the way up to the top and it stops, yeah, that didn't work. So we had to get another mic stand and take that to the top of where that stopped and then push it up from there. And then, yeah, we were able to mic him. Uh, the next thing was he walked in there with this piece of paper and it just seemed like he just had a bunch of, piece, bunch of paper taped up from like different pieces of napkin that had this one verse on it. So to me, that just let me know how focused he was when it came to his music and then he went in there and just did his verse. All we did was just coach him through it, and everything worked out. Nice. So we have the track here. We also have the rhythm, I believe. What do you want to do? Let me know right. what you want to do. You want to you play the 5 to 5, or you want me to play the rhythm? Play what you want to play, man. All right. Y'all got to hear this tune, so I'm going to play the 5 to 5. That's, that's cool. Right, play, play what you want to play. Man. All right. This is What's Up, Doc. Can we rock? Future and Shaquille O'Neal. Foosh niggas. The bust the freaky, freaky, freaky way The brothers with the Asian keys Making cheese, what? And now we selling records overseas Holy smoke, oop, your whole plan pooped up Now you get kicks, enough licks, plus cooked up Cause you can catch a quick job And try to take the sticks Props of tick-tock around the clock And shock while we lick shots Whoa. But goodness sakes, the stakes is high I'm out, you out ABC ya, bye Carry Rock Like the head 
Yes, I'm Teddy. My trunk starts to kicking like Speedy. Think up your band, your bag, your lips and bag, and run the whole up. To shave pussy, can't pull down that mic, cause you can rap. Cause I'm dip, dip, diving, so socializing. Clean out your ears, yes, and open up your eyes. And I kick like Bruce Lee, and I'm Zing Club Van Damme. So then, 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 Jeez. Yeah, that was a tune right there. Jeez. My memory of this song. That was a tune right there. My memory of this song was when it was uh, featured on Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> yeah, that was the, that, that's when everybody said we made it when Beavis and Butthead started trying to, to rhyme or whatever and do the What's Up Doc song. That was kind of dope. That was pretty dope. Very ill, very mm -hmm. ill. So after... The Nervous Breakdown album, you guys drop a Greatest Hits album. And then I think that's the, the final the final joint of the catalog. We didn't drop the Greatest Hits album. Okay. Jive dropped the Greatest oh, Hits Jive album. Oh, Jive dropped it. Okay. Hey. Okay. Shout out to Jive, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I really, like for me, lyrics is, is definitely forefront, but style also is a very important thing to me. And even when I, I do my thing, I try to implement very unique style with what I do. And I learned a lot of that from people like you, people like Shinehead and stuff. So um, what were some other things that made you come up with the style that you have? Uh, I just didn't want to sound like anybody else, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. And I wanted to... I wanted that when I finish recording a song and I press play, that I hear myself. I hear the culture in the music. And I, and I felt that, you know, I always wanted that if I had a grandchild, that when they picked up one of my records and they played it, they could be like, oh, you know, that's my grandfather. You know, I, I could hear that he's Trini and Bayesian in the record, you yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? And he's touching down on different things or whatever the case may be. So creating music for me, that's what I always wanted, was to make sure that people heard heard, you know, the background, the, the culture within the record, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, culture is definitely important. You gotta rep it everywhere you go. And sound system is definitely the culture that we try to push forward. Dubstai zone and, you know, we try to bury a sound boy in everything we do. Must bury a sound boy. Must bury a sound, bury a sound yeah. Speaking of burying sound boys, let's talk about the sound boy burial. Uh, well, every year I try to, um, remake a hip hop record that has like some reggae influence to it and just remake it and make it more of a reggae record or do the opposite, a hip hop record, you know, a reggae record and make it more of a hip hop record. So I'm always stuck in between the middle, just trying to make sure that I always exercise uh, skill and stay as sharp as possible. And um, that's what I've been doing. So that's where that Soundboy Burial record came from. Um, the way this thing is, I sent that record to Shaq just for him to hear, and he jumped on his, his uh, stories and played the record and put a wig on and started dancing to the record and <laughs> <laughs> got 1.7 million views just for him just, you know, uh, playing the record. But the one thing I could say is, like, um, it doesn't matter where you're from when it comes to reggae music. That touches everybody, you know what I mean? Seeing, seeing. Um and for those who don't know about the song by Boreo, it's originally a tune done by uh, Smith & Wesson, Boot Camp Click, and rumor has it that they were supposed to get busy on this joint. Yeah, and, um, last summer we was doing the Five Borough Tour, mm -hmm. and I walked up on, Spliff, on Smith & Wesson and was like, yo, y'all need to get on this, and they was just like, send it to me. And I was like, you know, no problem. Totally forgot about doing that. Steph didn't remind me. Steph, where you at? He's not there in the seat. He didn't remind me, but um, it's a tough record. And when they heard it, for them to tell me that they loved the record, that was all I needed to hear. Steph looks like he's pleading his cause. Like, nope. <laughs> Why bad, you out with bad. me, bro? My Why bad. you out with me? <laughs> all right, so you gotta be, we got to hear this live then. No, nah, hear, this hear live. it live? Nah, you, gotta, you can hear it, you know, but the live is a whole bunch of crossover pieces. So All we right, so we are going to hear the 45 then. Hear the 45. Then. All right, yeah. song by Barry, our champion song version. Chip Fu. <laughs> I 
la 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 How y'all feeling out there? Y'all good? Make some signal if y'all good, please. Let me know yeah, how yeah, I'm yeah. All right. Another uh, collaboration I want to talk about um, was, it's actually one of my favorite collaborations you've done. I want to talk about what you've done with legendary producer P. Rock. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> um, Pete Rock and I basically... No one knows this, but we're uh, basically going to put out a reggae album, uh, myself and Pete Rock. Uh, it's going to be crazy. Uh, one of the first records that we did, just to let people know that we could actually do a reggae album or a reggae song, was a song called Ready for War, which features myself, Pete Rock, and Renee from Jeanne, and it's a crazy song. And to be honest with you, people were playing that song, and they never knew that it was us. You know what I mean? And I, I think that's a good thing because all sound man wanted, you know, dub plates to that record and it's hard to get us three in one room. Um, but it's an incredible song called um, Ready for War, yeah. Nice. And um, so during this time, was it around the time you start to take on this moniker known as Jungle Rock Jr. or this is right before it? Nah, this was, this was when I took on the moniker Jungle Rock Jr. And just so people would know, I took on that moniker because I was still signed to a publishing deal. And I didn't want nobody to know my business, so I couldn't put out records as Chip Fu at the time because then they'd be like, oh, that record is mine. So what I did, I came up with a different moniker and basically started putting out different records under that moniker overseas. And I was basically touring like a, a, a reggae artist in overseas. And, no one knew it was me until uh, I did a show with uh, MF Doom <laughs> and uh, Conscience. And I, I walked out and MF Early Doom right. was like, yo, you look like this guy from New York called Chip Fu. And I was like, eh, a lot of people say that, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but he was like, yo, you just went on there and just did a full on reggae set. And this is Italy and we're performing for 40,000 or more people and you're ripping it down as a totally different person. And People in New York don't even know that that's actually you. And I was just like, well, you know, you got to be smart and do what you need to do. You know what I mean? So it worked out perfect for me. All right, man. Ready for War. One of my favorite joints on uh, NY's Finest. That P-Rock album, if y'all haven't heard it, y'all check it out. Um, wicked tune. Rhythm is very, very familiar. Y'all know it as soon as y'all hear it. Uh, ready for War. <laughs> Oh, 
clean and scrub it that not pure And I'm sure them have antidote for disease Them say can be cured My tongues are scored But when they lie and roll Yeah, I am sure That all bad minds individual Living sinful gets judged by judge as laws See so nobody with him any rhythm that is given and I kill it with force The force where I come from a different type of place I'm real clean source I have my armor and my shield so I don't fear no more Cause Lord God is guiding me for sure hey, I'm ready so sure. run Trust me me not just run And all bad man he pull them and get on Get on My armor and weapon God's breath in my lungs And I must have one till his work is done He's done I'm ready so run Trust me me not go run And all bad man he pull them and get on my armor and my gun Got breath in my lungs And I won't stop until this work is done He's done ready for war I'm ready yep, for yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Yeah, yeah Ready for war Signal, people, signal Yeah, yeah Now during this uh, During this time you also did a tune Wicked tune Livicated to all the herbalists, all the ganja man, ganja woman, everybody in between the thing called Sensi. Let's reason about that real quick. How did that come about? Well, um, again, <laughs> I couldn't do any recording as Chip Fu, so I was like, yo, I'm just going to run full speed with all this reggae records that I have and put it out. So what I did is I jumped on the Kali Buds rhythm and did a song called Love Me Sensi. Um, the record took off. All these radio stations are playing this record and they're wondering who's this Jungle Rock Junior kid, right? So they stopped playing the original Kali Buds record. Sony paid for Shaba Ranks to get on the Kali Buds record, along with G Unit or whatever, to get on that Kali Buds record. And it still wasn't getting as many spins as my record was. So, you know, Sony sent the cease and assist and was like, yo, you got to stop that. Whoever this Jungle Rock Junior kid is, you know what I mean? But that kid was me, which shocked a lot of people because I already I made it to radio with a, a record that was pretty big. So it's 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 one of them cult classics. You get me? It's it's such a wicked tune. I my memory of it is uh, seeing you perform this. Uh, uh, I think it was Fort Green Festival back in two thousand and seven, maybe two thousand and eight. Yes. Yeah, I remember. Like I was like, hmm, that's chip food. Yeah, man, I get down, <laughs> man, I get down. Yeah, it's a wicked tune, man. We're going to get into that right now. Think a little Miss Sensi. Come around, rhythm. Run. Yeah. All right, people. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the weed me love, weed me love, weed me love, me love me sensi. Smoke until the whole bag is empty. Roll one with gently, come with me. All right, people, me don't worry. Here's the, 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 the funny part. The funny part about that was 500,000 views on YouTube. The record dropped on a Friday, and then the Monday it had five, 500,000 views which is crazy. So you had every record company trying to sign this Jungle Rock Junior dude, but I couldn't sign any contract because I was still stuck to jive on the, you know, the publishing contract. So can you imagine me sitting there with about seven contracts and I couldn't sign it because jive wouldn't let me go. So that's the craziest thing. So that's why there's this love-hate thing with this record, Love Me Sensi, so we can go to the next record. All right, next. <laughs> It's like yo, go on, on YouTube, <laughs> check the video out, check the tune out. It's a yeah. wicked, wicked tune, man. Wicked tune, man. Love me, Sensi. Yeah. All right, man. Forward movements. You got a, a new project brewing. Yeah. Uh, the thing is called Royal Blood. I want you to explain to us why you call the project Royal Blood and how this project came to accumulation. Well, this project uh, basically came to fruition because I finally got out of my publishing contract with Jive. So I was free. So I was free. Just like, yo, make some noise for free. being free and I independent, like, yo. yo. I said, the first thing I'm going to do is just hook up with the right people, form my own company, which is Black Ink Entertainment. Shout out to my boy, uh, Steph over there, who's been bothering me to get the album done. And then from there, um, I just started recording it last year. So 
I got about 60 records, but I can't put out 60 records. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put out like 12, you know what I mean? So um, Royal Blood just, uh, for me, is just like, you know, it's about being part of royalty. I wanted people to know that, you know, the blood, you know, we are of royalty. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, green, or yellow. You know, as long as you love who you are as a person and love people, then it's more so about that royal blood vibe. You get me? So I just wanted to drop an album that spoke to my fan base and to the brand new fan base. So I had uh, put together an album that has Afro beats, hip hop, and reggae on it, and totally different from what I would be doing if I was doing a Fushnikins album. But it still have the Fushnikins vibe on it, and I just wanted people to know that, yo, that. When you're in a group like the Fushnikins, the only thing that you could actually do is do 16 bars. You're jumping on a song, every song that you're doing, you got two other people on the song with you, so you can't really do the music. You get what I'm saying? So I think this time around, it, it, it was just the freedom alone to be able to do as many records as possible and to, to, just, to just touch different genres. So that's what I did on um, Royal Blood, which will be coming out at the end of April, and it's, the album is crazy, so y'all need to check that out when it drops. So very, very I brought sweet. a few records with me, you know yes, what I'm saying? Yes, yes, we, we, we've been blessed with a few joints. Um, we play a little bit of uh, each and every one, not a lot, just a little. You know. All right, so. Then we could erase it after. Okay, you know. okay, so we're gonna give you a preview of Royal Blood following in April. Uh, the first tune I'm gonna run is a tune called Eradication. Yeah, that's the remake of um, Yellow Man's Operation Eradication. So I had to touch that record and um, you know, pay homage. So yeah, I did that. All right, man. Let's go in at eradication. Operation radication. Operation radication. They must be run, run. They must be run, run. They must be run when radication I come. They must be run, run. They must be run, run. They must be run when radication I come. They must be run, run. They must be run, run. They must be run when radication I come. Well, the ha. level's high like a skybox, and level start with the sky stops. Uh -huh. And the only way to reach my level is if the sky falls or the sky drops. And the cyborg that travels through time walks, and when I ball like a cyclops. Uh -huh. And the only guy that can test like an eye is an optician with eye drops. Yeah. Listen, as many wishing they can sit in on me, get you with my pots. Uh -huh. They be missing your fine parts, your fine parts of their hind parts. Your fine arms, <laughs> leg, <laughs> feet, <laughs> back. You hear a big scream, then I post the things on the big screen on the IMAX. Uh -huh. See, my nigga Ross class could treat me like an apprentice, a mascot. Uh -huh. Cause guys applying to fly within the booth when I book my time slot. Uh -huh. And when I would apply, in the booth, leave the ply with the dry rot. And if you reply to what I got fight in the booth, the booth's like a pine box. I'm Roderick, I'm hot as an iron trying pot. Fragging cut fish and fragging out trout. And me, I'm fine, boss. Fine doing my job. Uh -huh. But what they rise? Them boy, they think said the ink and I'm ink pen trap. Uh -huh. But I'm dotty like a pig pen boy, so don't get sure. tied up. <laughs> Lyrics on a level and go. Radication. Woo. Woo. Why thank you, people? Why thank you? That's uh, Operation Radication. Uh, yeah, the remix, the remake of the record. Yeah, nice man. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. The f yeah, the flow, man. The flow, the thank style. Thank you, man. Thank you. I'm a rubber dub dude, so you know the the yellow man, fathead sample. Love it, man. All right, we're gonna get into our next tune called No Binoculars Our Compass. Called what? No binoculars. Oh yeah, no binoculars you can, or, or compass, meaning yeah. you can't find me. So yeah, that's that's a that's a okay. crazy record too. Just you know, lyrics. Just this is just bare lyrics, people. So yeah. All right. So you said before we get into it, you said in with this project you ventured around a bunch of different sounds. Uh huh. Um, we have the rubber dub, hip hop with the eradication. What is what is the sound for this one? This is more dancehall. You know what okay. I mean? So. J this is bo basically my dance hall and hip hop mix of how I do dance hall, basically. Okay. You know what I mean? So when people hear it, you can tell that, you know, it's going to be a different sound. You know what I mean? All right. So it's no binoculars or compass straight off of the Royal Blood Project. Aha. Aha. Yeah. 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 See me neither. Yeah. 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 Y
me, 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 on the me, 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 Cause lyrics are rational, lyrics are empty, go find an empty, get a cemetery. On the cap line, me, 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 on the cap, me, 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 Cause lyrics are rational, lyrics are empty, go find an empty, get a cemetery. Lyrically, rock, I got bonkers. I'm the dirty kid, nigga, I'm us. Sick, I'm the dragon, that's under the steps, in the house of the stone by the monsters. I'm lyrically once and beyond ya. With lyrics, I'm that I conjure. And I leave a city when I can't fit with the arms crossed like they from Wakanda. No, my knocklets, on no campus. Cause some tools can be just in my function. And on the cap, see me, 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 cause lyrically, I got me as beyond ya. Never wonder, never wonder. Soon to be the king in every genre. Cause I execute electrocuted and shocky dudes like I'm the good thing of Blanca. On the cap, I'm the king of Blanca. Charlie yeah. Siren, man, Siren. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I'm coming to eat everybody food, trust me. Bro, I'm saying it plain as day too. I'm coming to eat everybody food. Janua dogs. They better share too. Production's ill, flow ill as usual, man. This album is sounding fire so far. We're gonna get into a next tune called Majai. Wanna read about that real quick? My Joy? Yeah. My Joy is an Afro, one of them Afro beach joints. I just wanted people to know that I could, I could touch on that too. So, you know, that's what My Joy is about. So, yeah. Versatility is key, people. We're going to get into My Joy off of Royal Blood, Chip Fool. My Joy. My Joy. My joy, commitment forever. 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 One of the sweetest things to see is when a couple's deep in love. You see joy upon their faces. And all the happiness is real from all the people that's involved. involved, involved. It's a commitment that takes patience. Never leave things unsolved. Cause if you do, that makes things tough. And that will lead to problems. That will lead to problems, boy. Whether it's big or problems, small. Put aside time and solve the problem. Just keep things honest. Like a slate is clean regardless. And just live in your joy. joy. My joy. That's a tune, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Bop, bop. All right, I we got playing. I ain't playing with them, son. I ain't playing. I'm coming for their food. I yo. hear that. I hear that. Versatility is key. They need, to, key, they need to prepare a table, a place at the table for me. Knife and fork and all of that too, yo. <laughs> I'm coming. Yeah. Nice. All right. So we have a we have one more. One more for from the Royal Blood Project, Look of Love. Look of Love is just one of those rubber dub records, you know what I mean? I just wanted people to know that I could touch that vibe also. Besides the hip hop, I just want people to know that this record is a well-rounded album when it, when it drops, you get me? So I just can't wait for people to hear it, you know what I mean? Yo, I'm already excited about this project, man. Thank you. I'm hearing a lot of, um, a lot of things that I'm really into, so. Yeah, man, final entry for now. Until y'all pre the album in April. Yeah, Royal yeah, yeah. Blood. It's gonna be crazy. Yeah, man. Team called Look of Love. Say the eyes. Yeah. Uh -huh. They say. Everybody always talk about All right. Yeah. Oh, yes. Look of love. Oh, yes. Hey, the look of love. They say the eyes are windows to the sun. But sometimes if it feels like some heartache and pain, uh -huh. nothing but yell across your heart. All these dangers of emotion shall remain, uh -huh. remain, remain. Yeah. Yell and don't fly, you look at me and smile, you with your eyes, your eyes. But you'll never let pride the reason why you can't enjoy this life, this life, this life. I don't need no validation and I don't need no signs, no signs. when I look into your eyes, and I know that you are mine, you're mine, you're mine. Girl, you know I love how you look at me. The way you look, you stand and stare, really show me you can. Ba, 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 yo. Look of love. Yo, All for the Royal Blood Project forming in this April. I'm Chip trying food. to tell y'all I'm not playing. 
They, they, they better make a... Listen. Listen. I telling all you now, they need to make place at that table for me, right? Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. That is it. That is all I had to say about that. But again, it's going to be one of those shocking albums that when people hear it, it's going to be like, well, that can't be the same guy from the Fushnikins. You get what I'm saying? And that's what I want people to actually say. I don't want it to be a situation where it's like, oh, that sounds like him. You know what I mean? I want to be able to cover all genres to make sure I get on all those playlists. You get me? Nice, hey. man. Royal Blood forward in this April, man. Yeah. Y'all be on the lookout. Mm. We wrap it up, we wrap it up, but you know, we can't have a veteran at the place and not actually for touch a thing. See? Mm. So I can play one one rhythm and see what you can do with it. All right. Hold on there, hold on there. All right. Let's see what you can do with this one. Chip Fool live and direct high five sessions, dub style sound ace hotel Brooklyn. Rancho! No. Yeah! You just make sure you mix me nice, yo. All right, people. Don't worry yourself. Yeah! All right, people. Yeah! 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 I spit like a frog about mixed with ignite double liquid. I'm talking that dipshits. Coming to frog about any type of tad and all of my global fix it. Sorry for frog and off the frog for frog and off and a frog and off the 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 I I'm done, done, bro. I'm done, bro. I'm done. 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 I'm, I'm done, man. I'm done. 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 No, make some noise if you want to hear more. I'm done. I'm done. Nah, make nah, some nah, noise nah. if you want to hear more. Nah, 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 nah. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Hear what, people? <laughs> First, I'm going to say this. The love. Let me just, I want everybody to hear when I say this thing. Let me, let me say this. Let me say this. For me to be sitting at home, right, not being able to put out music for years, to finally be able to put out music and to hear the response from you people is one of the most beautiful things I could have heard in a long time. You get what I'm saying? Because to be honest with you, if you think about it, all that Fushnik and stuff was 30 something years ago. My son is 28 years old right now, right? So you have my son sitting at home saying, yo dad, you're real fire. I mean, these kids be like, yo, you're fire or whatever. So for me to get to this point where I'm playing records for you guys right now and I'm getting that response, that really touches something at home. So I know I'm doing the right thing and I appreciate you guys. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yes, and Dubstyle, thank you for having me, man. We're going we're gonna to do more stuff like this. 